Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. We are ready to rock and roll with these angles in standard position. So that'll be our title for today, Angles in Standard Position. So before we dive right in, let's just take a moment to kind of review a little bit about angles from our geometry class last year. First and foremost, hopefully you remember what an angle looks like. Um, and I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to stick two arrows on the end. These indicate they are rays, and I will just label that a ray. And the side is also a ray. And they meet at this sharp corner here, and that's called the vertex. <clears throat> now, the angle inside, we're going to represent in trigonometry with that theta. All right, and that's just representing however big this angle is here. Now, in trig, these are the things we're going to worry about about our angles here. First and foremost, so go ahead and copy these down, the vertex has to be located at the origin. Okay, so this point right here in green, <clears throat> that has to sit right at the origin. One ray is going to be right on the x-axis, sitting right on it. And this is called the initial side, and we do want to know them by name. So the one that sits on the x-axis is the initial side. And the second ray is going to be called the terminal side. And basically, this is the side that moves. Now, before we start drawing any of these, let's go ahead and talk about our quadrants. So hopefully you know by now that there are four quadrants. Oops. And let's go ahead and draw an x and y axis. And they're going to get labeled like this. We start in this upper corner, and this represents quadrant one. And then they go counterclockwise, so against the clock. So two would follow this way, three down here, and four over here. And again, hopefully that's old news to you. If not, that's okay too. But we have four quadrants. Now, we're going to label degrees on each of these as well. And we're always going to start right here. So let's go ahead and label that zero degrees. Now, I think this will make a lot of sense to you. If I come up to this first, if I were to make an angle here between this x-axis and this y-axis, could you guess how many degrees that is? I mean, hopefully you're saying it looks like a right angle. So I would definitely say that represents 90 degrees. <clears throat> now, think about this. If this represented 90 degrees, and you come over here and have another one, I would say that's a total of 180 degrees, basically two 90s. So we'll label that 180. Same idea here. I had this 90, I had this 90, and I'm going to add another 90 to it. Can you add that up in your head? That should be 270 degrees. And lastly, when I come all the way around again, I have four 90s, which total 360 degrees. <clears throat> now, I can keep walking around this x and y axis as many times as I want. I could loop it once to get 360, and I could go another 90, and I could put a 450 up here if I wanted. I could just keep adding 90 degrees. But what we want you to get out of this today is that you start here at zero, and we're going counterclockwise. So that first right angle makes a 90, and then if I keep going, I get 180. If I go another 90, I get my 270, and back around to make 360. And you'll notice that makes a circle, okay? And there's 360 degrees in a circle, another way to think about it. Um, those of you who loved geometry last year, a line, a flat line there, is 180 degrees, half the circle. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and, you know, take careful notes here. Jot these down. Feel free to pause it and copy when you need to. An angle is measured by the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. Okay, that's how we measure angles and trig, from the, and probably how you did in geometry as well. The amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. If you go counterclockwise, so that's against the clock, so I'll put a little arrow. If you go counterclockwise, that is a positive angle. And if you go clockwise with the clock, that represents a negative angle. So let's get down to business and actually graph some of these. If you've got a colored pencil or, or just even a different color, a pen or something, that would be pretty handy here because we're going to draw kind of on top of some graphs. So here's the question they love to ask. In what quadrant does theta terminate? And in parentheses here, I tried to put it into my own language. What they're really asking is where does the terminal side end up? Terminate, meaning where does it end, and they're implying the terminal side. All right, so let's say our question one here, our theta, our angle, is 45 degrees. 
All right, so we're gonna quickly sketch each, each of these. This is a very simple idea. So I'm gonna go ahead, make my x and y axis. I'm gonna quickly label my numbers as angles. So this is zero. This is one right angle, so that's 90. Two right angles make 180. Three make 270, and back around to 360. And they want me to sketch an angle of 45 degrees. Now here's where that second color is going to come in handy. You'll recall back a few pages we said that the initial side has to sit on the x-axis and the vertex is at the origin. So I'm going to start by putting my vertex at the origin. Okay, and my initial side is going to sit on the x-axis at zero. And let's go ahead and label that initial side. Now, I need to sketch 45 degrees, and just use some common sense. Once you've labeled this, this is fairly easy. This is 0 degrees, this is 90 degrees. I hope you're saying 45 lies smack in the middle. So I'm going to draw my ray smack in the middle, and I'm just going to label this the terminal side. Okay. And the question was, in which quadrant does theta terminate? And I'm going to put my theta in here, I'm going to show with an arrow I went 45 degrees counterclockwise, positive. And I'm going to answer this question as quadrant 1. And that's all there is to it. So again, real quickly, initial side goes on the x-axis, vertex at the origin. Draw in your terminal side where you think it goes. And then always just label it with an arrow which direction you went. So we went positive 45, which is counterclockwise. Let's try another one. All right, question 2. Let's say this time theta equals 200 degrees. All right, so we're going to get our quick sketch going. Okay, X and Y axis, label your degrees. So it goes 0, 1 right angle is 90, 2 makes 180, 270, and then back to 360. I'm going to switch colors, so if you've got a color, that'll be handy. Vertex goes at the origin. Initial side is on the X axis with a nice ray. And again, I'm going to write initial until I get that ingrained in my head. And now I just have to ask myself, where does 200 degrees fall? And if you labeled it, again, I think it's pretty obvious. I would say 200 definitely falls between 180 and 270. Now, let's be a little accurate. Are you going to be closer to 180 or closer to 270? And hopefully you're saying 180. So I'm not going to draw this race smack in the middle. I'm going to draw it a little closer to the 180 mark. Now, don't forget you're not done until you show which way your angle went. It was a positive 200 degrees, so that's counterclockwise. And we're just going to say theta equals 200 degrees. And lastly, which quadrant did we terminate? Well, if we count them out, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. So I would say we are in quadrant 3. We terminated or ended up in quadrant 3. All right, I've got just a few more for you. Let's say theta equals 700 degrees. Whew. All right, let's sketch them out. Uh, go ahead and label your axes. So I've got 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Hopefully you've got that drilled in. All right, now think about this. If I say it's 700 degrees, would you agree you would have to go around the circle more than once? If you went around, that's a total of 360. When if you went around twice? 360 times 2 is 720. So you don't actually need to go all the way around twice, but you definitely need to go all the way around once. So here's how I work it out. I say I'm going to take my 700 degrees and I'm going to take out one circle of 360. And that leaves me with 340 degrees. So basically I say to myself, this is what I want to graph, 340 degrees. All right, so let me get a color. I'm going to begin with my vertex at the origin, initial sign, And now watch this. I still have to show that I went around the circle once. So I'm going to start here with my arrow, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go around once. That's 360. And now I need to go another 340. And hopefully you'll agree that will put you pretty close to 360. So I'm going to carry this around, come back, come back, get close to 360 but not touch, and draw in my ray. And I'm going to say that that huge angle is whoops, 700 degrees. And of course this is my terminal side. And lastly, I would just say I ended up in quadrant 4. So no worries if it's bigger than 360. You just go around as many times as you need to. 
Um, let's try another one. Let's go with a negative angle this time. Let's say theta equals negative 200 degrees. All right, so get your axes, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, now if I want to go negative 200 degrees, I'm still going to start the same. Vertex at the origin, initial side here, and again, I'm going to put initial here. Now, the only difference is, is that you're not going to go counterclockwise 200. You have to go clockwise 200. So just be careful. If I go from here to here, remember, that's one right angle. That's actually 90 degrees. And if I go from here to here, that's another 90. So that's a total of 180. And I need negative 200. So I need to go just a little further. So I'm going to say I am now going this way and my theta is negative 200 degrees. All right, so anytime you want a negative angle, you are going counterclockwise. That's the whole key. And this time we end up in quadrant two. All right, number five. And this might have crossed your mind already. What if theta equals exactly 270 degrees? How would you answer the question, what quadrant does it terminate in? Well, that's a fair question. Um, again, let me start by putting my vertex and my initial side in. And if I go 270 degrees, clearly, that's my 90, my 180, 270, I'm going to be right on this axis. And there's my positive 270. So notice, I can't actually say I'm in a quadrant. And that's okay, because we're not in a quadrant. This is actually called, when you're on the axis, these are just called quadrant angles. because the angle you make is not actually in a quadrant, it's on one of the axes. So it's just titled quadrant angle. Nothing too mind-blowing, I hope. So you're right, you can't say it's actually in a quadrant, it's just on the y-axis. <clears throat> All right, our last term for the night is coterminal angles. And what that means is that's two angles that share the same terminal side. Now I think it sounds a lot uglier than it actually needs to be. Coterminal, just two angles that share the same terminal side. So let's go ahead and sketch this out. If we said theta equals 120 degrees, and I'm going to go ahead and label my 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. And I sketch 120 degrees. So there's my vertex, my initial ray. 120 is going to fall in this second quadrant here between my 90 and 180. I can easily say that this terminal side shares an angle that has the same terminal side. Think about this. You just want a positive 120 degrees. If you go a negative amount, would you share the same terminal side? And I would definitely say yes. If I said, let's draw theta equals negative 240. I would start here, I would go my 90, my 180, 240, and they would share the same terminal side. So they're just called coterminal angles. So together, 120 and 240 are coterminal. Now a couple things you'll notice. If you kind of ignored this negative sign and you added 120 and 240, what number do you get? Hopefully you're saying you would get a total of 360 because basically they need to come together and make a full circle. Okay, and again, I just ignored the negative sign, added those two to get 360. That's one reason they're coterminal. They make a whole circle together. Now, it's very important that we understand there are an infinite amount of answers. And what do I mean by that? <clears throat> well, could you come up with another angle that shares the same terminal side as 120? Think about this. If you went around once, that's 360, and add on 120, are you going to share the same terminal side? Well, I would say absolutely. So 360 plus 120, 
Well, that's another coterminal angle of 480 degrees. Could you do it again? Sure, you could do this all day. You could go round once for 360, around twice for 720, add on 180, and there you go again, 840 degrees. So again, there's an infinite amount of answers. You just most likely have to be able to come up with one or two of them. So if you haven't quite figured it out, like I said before, they have to add up to 360. One easy way to get this is add and subtract 360 degrees. And again, I'll, I'll just verify with those same numbers that I just used. If I took 120 and I added 360, a whole circle to it, I get my 480, which we just said was coterminal. And if I take that number and add 360 to it, I get my 840, which we just said was a coterminal angle. Now you could do the same thing with subtracting. If I took my 120 and subtracted 360, I get negative 240, which was the first coterminal angle we drew in. Whoops. And again, you could just keep adding and subtracting 360 degrees. All right, I've got, this is my last one, I promise. Uh, try this one on your own. Find three coterminal angles uh, based off theta equals negative 111. And I'm going to sketch it out first and then see if you can, you know, pause it, try it on your own, see if you can come up with at least three different angles. All right, well, I have mine drawn in, my negative 111. Did you catch that you had to go clockwise for that negative angle? And the first one I'm going to get is this one here. What positive angle would I go to make it match up? Well, I'm just going to take negative 111 and basically add 360 to it. Remember, I want a complete circle, so I'm adding 360. And I get a positive 249. And I think that makes sense. If I go 249 degrees in the positive direction, I should match up with negative 111. And I could get another one. I'm just going to take 249 and add on 360. <clears throat> and I get 609. And I'll just quickly verify that. That's telling me I would go around the circle once for 360 and then go another 249 degrees. And I'd end up on the same line. So there you have it. So we've covered two topics tonight, coterminal angles and angles in standard position. Have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow.